All right, welcome everyone. This is a Viper Professional Training and Support webinar. Uh, this is a Monday night webinar. Today's date is May 8th, 2017. And as everyone knows has been to our webinars or our live trading room, everything that we say and do at Viper Trading Systems is for educational purposes only. Futures trading, Forex trading, any kind of financial instruments trading involves risk. Therefore, there's always risk of loss. You should only trade discretionary capital, and that is money that you can afford to lose. Nothing said in this webinar. Other webinars we might have, our live trading room or anything else with Viper Trading Systems should never be construed as trading or investment advice. And as always, everyone does trade at their own sole discretion. Any questions on the disclaimer? Because if not, we're going to go ahead and get started with the webinar. Quite a few people still coming in. Okay, that, that's all right. Um, if anybody missed anything, the standard disclaimer is still up on the screen. All right, we never start a webinar without it. So I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of things here. Bear with me a second. You should be able to see the uh, standard disclaimer screen, but if you happen to actually just go to vipertradingsystems.com to our home page, you will find that you will go right immediately to uh, our home page here. It should, should just take a second to do it. Probably won't. There we go. All right. And uh, if you'll go to our webinar link, you'll be able to easily see some nice webinars that you can watch if you're on trial, or even if you just came in for this week that we're, we're having this week. Okay, so just click on that link right there and you'll see a lot of webinars that you'll, you'll be more than uh, welcome to go to. All right, let me go ahead and go out of the standard disclaimer and we'll get started with the webinar. Well, here we go. I'll tell you what, let, let me show the webinar recordings page first. The webinar recording page that we have here, you'll notice that we have some uh, April, April 6th, uh, April 22nd, April 24th, and even 50417 uh, on here. So you've got some really good webinars that you'll be able to watch that are, are very, very recent. These aren't like year old or two-year-old two webinars. Now, our members get access to all the webinars that we have, but you're welcome to go to any of those that you want there. All right, so let's go ahead and go out of this, and we'll go to a chart. Bear with me a second. And I'm going to go to our good old chart that we like to go to real quick. And I'm going to ask everybody, if you like to draw on your charts, You first want to see what the overall trend is, right? And I mean, it's pretty easy to see by looking at that chart. Viper Traders, what direction is the chart looking at? Anybody? Uh, Ed says he's actually in a short on TF Now Live. Cool. Some people make money while we're in these webinars. Yeah, exactly. It's down, right? But if you draw on your charts, can you clearly see some areas that would be very good resistance to give an example. So what I like to do, well first off I'll go ahead and draw lightning one also because this is lightning three. This is actually telling us what the overall trend is right here. Lightning one is right here and it's pretty much telling you that it's starting to kind of retrace upward, isn't it? So I would actually draw on my chart like so. Okay, and I'm going to change this to a little lighter color so we can actually see it, okay, and, and draw on your charts, and also even uh, take the time to draw your fibs too, if you want. Now I went ahead and put Object Trader fibs on here tonight, display the fibs, and lo and behold, if you look at this, if this was to retrace from this move like this right here, your 50% looks like it's really close to our line, doesn't it? So let's raise our line up just a tad. That's a 50% retracement right there at 12.32, okay? Now we can get rid of our fibs by just simply clicking to not display them anymore, okay? Display them or don't display them. And remember the fibs are, uh, they're actually active, so they'll, they'll literally tell you where fibs are even, you know, as far back as you want to go on the chart, okay? I like to usually just stay, you know, with where the particular trend is right at the moment that I'm looking 
uh, so that I can get ready to take some trades. Okay, so we've already decided the trend is down. We're going to draw on this chart also. This is the exact same chart. By the way, that was a live chart that uh, is in uh, what we call replay mode because I like to show some, some nice areas to get in trades. And we'll also go over the trades that were called in the room this morning too. If you were with us this morning, you'll notice that we did hit you know, some really, really good trades. And uh, we didn't call some trades right at the first, like on TF, because it was moving around quite a bit. Okay, You want to be real careful at the opens of the market. There's a lot of people that will make money in pre-market trading, and then they'll give every dime of it back and then some when the thing goes, you know, just rocketing all over the place in the first part of the, the bell opening. You don't want to do that. Okay? Now, we have said that this is a downtrend. Now, notice that our indicators also say that it's a downtrend. Our background is red. We're stair-stepping down on phantom. We're stair-stepping down on our mid-band. And we're, of course, stair-stepping down on this phantom also. So, in other words, we're stair-stepping down. Okay, now that doesn't mean that if this breaks up, now let me show you two trades that I'd look for, because remember this morning uh, on gold, right before we uh, left the room, I talked about how to take a particular trade in gold and showed that I actually got that trade in gold. What I'd be looking for would be like a break, if this decided to break up, that is, and then come back and kiss. You know, somewhere in this general area. Now, you're not saying exactly where it's going to kiss at, okay? But usually they'll break up, they'll come back and kiss, they'll try to kiss an area where they broke out, and then they'll they'll head up. Or in the case of this, where we've got a mid-band that's short, we could just simply turn on Object Trader. And I'll just, well, we can do it with a box you want to. Some people said box it. Okay, let's box it. I'll go ahead and get rid of this box because this is not a real box. Our object trader has a real box on it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit insert on my chart here. Bear with me a second. It looks like i got to start the data first because my data is not moving. Bear with it just a second. There we go. All right, let me go ahead and do a little insert box. And if that doesn't work, let me do one other thing real quick, because I've had this paused for like an hour while I was outside helping my wife. So I'm going to go ahead and start it over. And now we'll get our little box here. Now, if you were in Charles's webinar on Thursday, everybody remember that Charles likes to get two candles down. Okay, like for a rollover to give an example. Now, what I'm going to show you here, though, what I like to personally do is uh, let's say, for instance, that this particular candle, we know right now that it's forming, and that looks like about three ticks to me. Okay, so if this actually even touches below this, you don't have to wait on a close if you're waiting on two candles. Now, I know in his particular webinar, he did mention that that's the way he likes to do that, and that's fine, you know, um, but you got to have pretty loose stops. Okay, because if you take this trade right now, where's your stop? Anybody? I mean, if, if this trade was to fire, where would our stop be? It'd be above the swing, wouldn't it? So if this fires below here with a second candle down, we're going to have like seven and possibly eight ticks to the downside, right? So your stop would have to at least be those seven or eight ticks, wouldn't it? Okay, so we do have a feature built into Object Trader where you can just simply say, you know what, I'll just go ahead and take this if it touches outside the box by two ticks, like that. And then if this does happen to actually do that, and we'll just go ahead and do like, uh, we'll do three. And we'll see what we can get here. I'll, I'll kick it up to about five or six times just so you can see it. Now, we've drawn on our box. We know what we're doing on this trade, right, everyone? Okay, that's one tick out of the box. One more, and it'll fire. See if it gets it. See if it gets it.
touch plus two. Hope we don't run into our, our data being uh, a problem tonight. I did run into that the, the last webinar. We'll see here real quick. If not, what I'll do, because my, my programmer just sent this just a little while ago, let me do one other thing just real quick, because I have not uh, done more than just reload NinjaScript. I'm going to go ahead and put the strategy back on the chart, too, because he did send this just a little while ago, and I uh, com compiled and everything, but I didn't restart Object Trader. So let's just go ahead and restart Object Trader. Okay, and we'll go ahead and go with touch plus two and see if we can get something here. And I'll go ahead and go three. Now, it's, you notice it's already been two now, so we have to go back to two again. Okay. Now, keep in mind, your object trader won't do this just yet. This is my copy that I just got. We've got it to where you'll be able to draw the green box and have it active from start. You'll, you'll be able to actually move the box as it's live, which is pretty cool. Uh, to give an example, let's say if I just wanted to take like two contracts to give an example, if this was to close outside my box or even touch outside, but I can move the box while it's live and actually add to my trade if I want to also. I'll show you how that's done. This is really slow at 2 o'clock in the morning. Let's see if we can get in a trade. So we're, we're going short outside the box, touch plus two, which should give us uh, the two ticks outside the box, plus one to confirm the trade. Okay, I may have to speed it up a little bit. That's, there we go. Okay, we're in it, all right? Now, let me show you how you can actually add to this, too, if you want to. Let's say, for instance, that I wanted to go ahead, if this came through here, like this little support level, and I wanted to go ahead and add to, I could do that if I wanted to, because I can move my box while it's active on the chart. That's something that you don't have right now. Okay, before you have to hit enter, you know, uh, make it into an inactive box and then reactivate it. But we're not going to focus on that as much tonight as really drawing on the charts to see where we're going with these trades. Okay, now what I would do in this case right here, I would go ahead and put my stop just above the swing, and I personally like to use exit on close, okay? That means my stop is right there at 1232.30, but the bar has to close, okay? If I lose power, I've got a catastrophic stop right here, okay? Now, I also like to draw my charts. Where, where's my target on this one, Viper Traders? You've been with us a while? I'll draw a line, and you tell me where to bring it to. Where's, where's our target on this particular trade? Well, I would think that we would want to go here for a scalp. Everybody see it? You could draw your lightning and you'll see it. Let me draw a little lightning on here. Okay, see that, that lightning swing right there? That's where I expect it to go first. This is where I would expect it to go second, like so. And this is where I would like it to go last. Okay, now since I want a runner, I'll go ahead and move my target out of the way. Okay, if somehow we bounce here, and this looks like a pretty good uptrend, so this, you know, we could check the fib on this, but this may be about a 38% retracement on a huge run. Looks like it. Okay, so this could easily bounce here also, so we could actually be ready to take profit or use, for instance, our PM trade to get out of the trade. Now, notice we're only up like 20 bucks. It's not a big deal, 60 now. We've got two contracts on. We may get two more if it touches outside this little box. Okay. And that would simply give us two more targets, which would be these right here. Let's see, any questions coming in? How many of you, by the way, um, draw on your charts every single day? I won't single anybody out, but I can tell you this, if you'll draw on your charts every single day, you may, there you go, I'm getting lots of, I really try, yes, yes, most days I do, uh, with my eyes, there you go, there you go. Um, with your eyes, by the way, is a very, very good way to do it, because 
we teach how to see these by drawing on the charts, but you really also need to be able to see it without, without drawing on your charts too. But until you can see it, you, you obviously need to draw on your charts. Okay, because as these go down to the levels, for instance, that we expect them to, you're going to just continue taking profit. Let's see, it seems like when I take a trade like this one, it will bounce up. Um, well, actually, on that, we could. You know, we could actually, but see where resistance is if you draw your, remember we drew this on that black chart. Let's go ahead and do it again. Notice how your resistance is right there, and all it did was just tagged it right across here, like so. See, it just tagged it and kind of rolled over. Okay, so to me, this is still a downtrend. That's the type of uh, trade you want to just box in, just like we did just a minute ago. Remember when we got in, and now we moved our box down here so we can try to get two more contracts? See, we're going to get two more in just a moment if, if this actually uh, closes outside this box. You'll see two more add. We'll see if we get it. There you go. There's four. There's four contracts. Now, what would you do if you weren't even in this trade at all? Anybody? Well, you'd have to wait for some kind of retracement, right? So what I like to see them do a lot of times, I'll draw my lines on my chart. See, I see a nice swing here, which they're trying to break. But you can almost count on the fact when they break this line, they're going to come down and they're going to more than likely kiss it and roll over again. That's what they do. They stair step, just like this little picture here that I show every week. They stair step like that. They stair step. They stair step on larger charts, you know, like your lightning three. That's what this this is right here is lightning three. See, and this is thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust. That's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and it's still heading down and resistance held. So we wouldn't be afraid to short this. Okay, and look, we've got a little bit of profit now. And by the way, if, if you want to take off some contracts or something like that, once you get a little bit of profit, you certainly can do that. You don't have to try to get these large, there's another line right there. You might take off a couple if it gets down there. See that swing? That's what it means to draw on your charts. See this swing right here, down here? Maybe we want to take some off there instead of all the way down at the bottom. You know, because that'll still be great profit, by the way, with three contracts if we can get down there. Let's see, Adam says, I like to trade after hours when it's slow and get those pullbacks into swings you're describing. Exactly. And you know, Adam, the one thing that I'd mention to everyone here too is it's not a bad idea to actually trade somewhat after hours simply because when the market's open at 8.30 central time, which is 9.30 you know, uh, New York time, they move around like a house of fire. I even mentioned that today in the room. you got to watch it. You know, we, we got nice and profitable, and I even showed, you know, how nice and profitable I was. And then the one Russell trade cost me almost 300 because it literally moved really quick. That just happens. But you notice that we got exactly right back on track just right after that, and we nailed some great trades and called them too. That first, out of the gate, you know, when all those orders are sitting there and everything, they move around pretty good. I would recommend this if you're going to trade the open. You almost have to trade Lightning 3, okay, because they're, they're going to whip around a little bit, and, but they won't take out these larger swings. But then again, what if you shorted, say, here, for instance, let's say, and then Russell comes all the way back up and just barely nicks you out and then rolls over. Well, you take the short again, okay? Because that, that can even happen on these larger swings, too. See how that one just came up just barely above it? On a larger chart, that's just a wick. Let's see. If the trade is going against me, is there exit close the trade button right way? Well, Raj, on your question, now, we would be moving our stop by now, obviously, 
We don't have quite 12 ticks just yet. It'll go to break even at 12. You know, you can set this any way you want it, though. This is not a black box. You know, if you like going to break even at 8 ticks, you can just set this, and you go into your strategy and actually set right here your uh, stops and your break even. See, there's your break even right there. You just set that for 8 instead, and then right click and set it as your default if you want. Now, notice when you have a couple of contracts, any kind of pullbacks, this was up $400. Notice how it hit exactly where I said it would. That's because they're always going to these lines you draw on your charts. Once you learn to see them in your head, you won't have to draw them as much. Okay? But until you can see them in your head, you, you've got to kind of draw them on your chart. And it's not real difficult. You don't have to be like Picasso and you know, draw all kinds of figures and things like that. We just draw lines and rays, and we get these nice little trades. By the way, what if this was to touch outside that box again two ticks? Could I actually take it? That's right at resistance. Could I go ahead and add two more? If it short outside, touch plus two, short. If it gets that next tick, it should fire. There you are. You just got four. Yeah, there you go. Because that came right to resistance, didn't it? And I'm thinking that more than likely resistance will hold. Because what does the market do? It thrusts, it retraces, it thrusts, it retraces. And when you use lightning on your charts and know how to draw it and also how to see it in your mind's eye too, you'll make some really good trades. Okay, notice we're up 260, but with four contracts, that could be gone in a heartbeat. Okay, so I would probably move my stop at least to here, this uh, mid-band, because once we've come through mid-band and also taken out support, we shouldn't take out that mid-band again. Okay, now if we do, we're going to get stopped out, and that's fine with me, because every trade, you just got to take the way you see it. Let's see, what's confusing to me is uh, PM3 is green. I'll tell you why that's green, Mindy, and that's one thing you got to really be careful of, too. It's green because if you look to the left, it's all heading down. If you look to the right, you've got a low, a high, a higher low, and a higher high, and it even took out this right here. So this is also a 12 range. Notice that color right here. See that? navy and that green that's also a 12 range chart so that actually turned both those meters green but that just makes you know you you probably still want to pay more attention to where the prices are in regards to mid band uh, let's see peter said this is where sometimes it does get confusing because lightning is heading up and there is a higher low now, well, for instance, I'll show you how to trade this if, if you want to just simply with lightning. You want to do that? You want to see if we can get a trade? I will uh, take profit here, and we'll go ahead and uh, go down with these right here. I'm going to go ahead and take two off, though, instead of one when it gets down here. That way I don't have, you know, three riding. Okay, now where... Viper traders would be my stop if this closes below 1230.20. It's real easy to see because it already made the mark for you. Everybody see that? 1231, but we got to wait for it to close because this is not a lightning swing until it takes out that low right there. And I don't like just one tick. I like a closed bar. This is going like six times, but this is really, really slow. I'm going to speed it up to 10 times. Hopefully it won't be too fast. Okay, now that that's closed below there, couldn't we put our stop just above there? And the answer to that is absolutely right. As long as this is stair-stepping down, it is a downtrend, right? But what if it starts stair-stepping back up, which it could easily do? You know, you can actually use your, your PM. See how PM is uh, red right here? 
I can actually use my PM, get rid of this region, and go to PM2. And if this changes to green, I could even reverse this trade. You see what I mean? Because lightning would have to actually change the direction of this uh, power meter. Now, with just one candle like this, it shouldn't do the power meter 2, because power meter 2 is way up here, right now anyway. And you'll see it draw in real time. See, we take a lot of the guesswork out of it by letting the thing draw in your charts for you if you want. A lot of our people actually use that uh, feature like that. See how power, power meter 2 has not drawn just yet? That's because power meter 2 needs two candles in a row rather than just one. So it's a little stronger trend. Now, drawing on your chart, we need to watch this because this could be the end of the trade, right? Because you've got a bottom right here. Okay, and let's see what the fib is real quick. We've got our fib on here. Bring it over here like this. Turn on our fib. Oops, we turned off our fib, didn't we? Because I turned that, I changed the template. So we won't use that fib, we'll use this one. Let's see where this thing's at. Well, let's see, that's 38% right there on a huge move. Just a little below it is all. Now, if it does break, it should go down to my 50. But if it doesn't break, it'll head back up. Okay, one figure that you want to remember on large moves is 38%. We find that over and over and over that you get these huge moves like this, that retracement into 38 is usually the end of the run. Okay? And by the way, I could go ahead and turn on my PM meter just in case this bounces off this double bottom. Power meter is uh, red. We won't get the trade until it actually changes the uh, power meter too. Let's get rid of the uh, fibs now because we know where they're at. I'm going to go ahead and just move the stop out of the way. I don't care because if it does happen to break power meter 2, I'll just go ahead and reverse it because that's off of the 38% retracement, by the way. Now, as long as it's heading down, though, I'm not going to reverse this trade because this could easily roll over right where it's at. Everybody sees where it could roll over, right? Could easily roll over. We'll see. Now with the object trader though, if this meter does turn green, then maybe I can get back up to this line here or even, it would probably go higher than this one because usually if they're going to do a double bottom, they'll usually take out these swings or at least this swing. And it sure looks like a double bottom. Let's see what it does. Let's see, so you wouldn't do PM1. Well, you could. There you went. You got your PM2, by the way. Your PM2 fired. Now, notice, let me pause this for just a second. Notice why PM2 fired. It took out this swing right here. Now, that's fairly late, but that's also where it took out resistance. So if you took this out, wouldn't you think you'd at least go here? So is that a bad trade, considering that it should go at least there? No, because you should get, should get a scalp on it. Anytime you can see the swings to the left, you know, always look to the left to trade the right, and you'll see where they should be going. And, of course, if they go through that, then you've got to look to the next level, right? And then you've got to look to the next level. See that right there? And then you've got to look to the next level. And you just draw on your charts. That's the way it's done. Okay, let's see what we get out of this. We got, we did get our reversal, by the way. Now, if we would have done lightning one, uh, Mindy was saying, or let's see who was saying that. Yeah, Mindy said, so would not PM1 have it turned green? It would have turned green on PM1 right, actually right there on that closed bar right there. 
on that one right there. I'll draw the ellipse. That's where it would have fired on PM1, and this is where it did fire on PM2. Actually, PM2 may have actually been this bar because this looks like this could have been PM2 here because it did fire right here. So fairly close to each other, this bar here. So yeah, it fired. That's all we care about, right? But see, when you got a straight up like that, where would you place your stop? Okay, what you want to do on your stop, let me get this out of the way because we're really running right now. Now, we could be getting a phantom trade. We're going to see if we get a phantom trade. Now, phantom trade, what we would do is we would watch for a box in type deal. Short, if it happens to change power meter like one or two. Okay. And we can get this out of the way just in case we get a phantom here. And by the way, if this does decide to break up, you could also box this in right here and be ready to even take, see, see how that's trying to break that? I'd probably add, see it right there, break it. And then get this one out of the way. Okay, now this is trading in the time of night that I don't actually trade, but I'm going to show you here in just a little bit a trade that I actually had drawn on the chart and showed in the room this morning and how to take that trade also. But I want y'all, that's an Oklahoma term, by the way, affectionate term for y'all. Uh, I want everyone in the room to try to tell me where that trade is going to set up. Okay? Let's see if we can figure it out. Wow, this thing ran in the middle of the night. Where would you put your stop, Viper Traders? Well, you could either turn on PM meter, or you could put your stop right underneath the swing. See how that swings right there right now? I'm just a little under it, is all I'm doing. If you draw your lightning, you'll see it. I'll draw it. See your lightning right there? Just put it just a little underneath it, maybe a tick or two. Then when it breaks again, oh, look at that. We just, we just hit monster targets. Kind of got a shotgun at about 5, 12 in the morning or something, it looks like. Okay. We're still in long two. We'll go ahead and move our targets out of the way because we don't care now. We're just going to let it ride. Fire meters are all green. Not too shabby. Could be a double top. Draw your lines on your chart. See that right there? Could be a double top. You just got your uh, power meter flip. Now be very careful with this because this background and everything turned green. So I'd be real careful with that trade right there. And I'd probably put my stop just above that. Because this is not a trade that I'd normally be looking for. We'd be looking for a retracement trade. See if we can get one. This one's working out anyway, but let's see if we can get a retracement trade. Okay, everyone that's been with us, what's a good retracement trade? Let's go ahead and go for a PM long from mid-band. PM, oh, we'll go one instead. It'll fire if it takes out that little swing right there. See if we get it. And then it turned off my long. Oh, I had my reverse on. You got you can't start it out with reverse on it. Sorry about that. Well, we just missed that trade. We just well, it turned out it would have been a good trade, but. You can't have reverse on with uh, PM. Now, if this does happen to break below here, like so, they could be heading down instead of up. But what do we do as Viper traders if you miss a trade, which we just missed one, by the way? What do we do, Viper traders? We wait. Let's see if we can get, get a trade. I think, as a matter of fact, this is the one I got around 7 because it looks like it's thrusting right now. But we're looking for a retracement trade, aren't we? Now, right now, you could actually be looking for a phantom-type trade. Everybody see that? 
So I'm going to go long on a PM trade. If we get a phantom, power meter one's red, so we're looking for a green one. This is first time into phantom after a trend change. 85% probability trade. Uh, Mindy, on your question, when I do the webinar, uh, you're trading a long span of time, middle of the night until morning, and your totals are high using three to four contracts. When you trade in the AM and have a total like you did this morning with gold, are you trading more contracts and going? Well, what you can actually do with uh, gold or any of the instruments is use that feature that we've got on Object Trader that you'll, I think you've got it on yours now, I'm pretty sure. But if you don't have, that changed to uh, mid-band, so we're going to have to be careful with this trade. I'm going to tighten the stop, exit on close. That got in a little later than I wanted to, but we got our trade. Okay, now look what's happening right now. Anybody? Let's draw on our chart again. I'm going to get rid of all the lightning since we don't care about it from over here. We just we want to see it closer. Let's draw it. There's our lightning one. There's our lightning two. Let's draw lightning two from here so we can see it. All right. And what would we, would we be looking for, everyone? Box it in. Did you know boxing in is almost like a PM most times? Your power meter trade. See how power meter is green? But let's box it in. We like to watch two full candles, right? So we're going to box it in with region. Got to hurry. And we're going to go short outside, long outside, just in case. Because this could easily break to the other side too, couldn't it? See if we get a trade. And I'm going to go a touch plus two. Since we're going to have four range, four range, and two out of it, I would at least be getting down to here. That could be a scalp. Okay, always draw on your charts and you'll see where it's going if it breaks down. And if it breaks up, you don't have to take a breakout trade with a red background. You can always turn the, the long off. If this was to break up, you might want to actually have it break a swing that identifies, come back and kiss it, and then head up. Okay, but this is a box-in trade that we teach right here. It's exactly a box-in trade. See if we get something. Region is turned on. We got three contracts. Let's see what we get. Now this is the trade that I actually got that I showed this morning in the room. You could also get it another way. Draw your little trend line right underneath those lows. If it even crack, cranks through that and takes out that little wick, you could pretty much tell it'd be heading down. If it takes out my box plus two ticks, it'll fire the trade. And there you go. Just got you a trade. And what you want to do, anytime you get a trade like that, move one of your runners. Whoops, I just messed up and pulled my stop. I'm going to go ahead and get that trade again right there so I can show you. You notice that we did get it out of the box like we, we had planned to. Okay. So what I was doing, I accidentally moved my... Uh, target too quick, and I actually dragged the wrong thing. Okay. Now, drawing on your chart, where's your target on this? Right here. Just took it. Right there. Right. And what if it broke this? What, what do you think if it actually hits right around this area here and makes any kind of a consolidation. Could you add to the trade? All right, let's let's draw some lines. We got resistance right here. Look to the left to trade the right. Looks to me like that's correct. You got a little consolidation patch happening as we speak. Let's see if we can get add some contracts. So I'm going to go short outside. Turn this off, turn that to inactive, and then I'll see if I can go ahead and get a trade. Touch plus two. If it even comes near that, 
I'm going to do it on the outside of it. Now, everybody see why I'm doing the outside of it here? That would be if it comes up to my line here within two ticks, which is where resistance is at. Okay, I could also do it like this, something like this, and then regardless which way it does it, this one then I would change to inside, which would be right there at that swing. So I would get the trade if I touch plus two to the top of this box or if it goes out the bottom of the box. Now that is a little bit chasing a trade, but not when it consolidates. Remember we teach this all the time. You can box in and you can get some good trades. Okay, bank some coin, obviously at the bottom, right? You could even get rid of all but, you know, we've got like five contracts on, so we could go ahead and get rid of three if we wanted to, okay? Now, where would our stop be, everyone that's been with us a long time? That's a little close to me right now, right here. Looking to the left to trade the right, I'd probably put my stop just right across here. Bring it on down. Exit on close. Two candles in general, Brian. Um, you know, the one thing what you want to be careful of when you're, when you're trading, just like Charles was talking about last week, you don't want to just get on, in on the bar close and then it goes against you really quick. When I do the bar close, I usually do one contract and then I box. I've showed that several times in the webinars, and you can do it that way too. Okay? It works out great. By the way, gold, it just really, really, everybody saw what it did this morning, didn't you? It was just monster, monster day. But what, what if you missed it? What, what if you absolutely missed all this trading right here? What, what does everybody that's been with Viper do? you got to wait for a retracement, right? Okay, so let me show you a trade. Let's just pretend we're not even in this trade. We're going to just kill this trade. All right, and I'm going to draw my charts again. And let's see, that must be lightning two. Okay, and this is lightning one. And this is a line that I drew. We'll get rid of it. Anybody see a trade on this chart? Well, that, that's true, Brian. I saw your email, too. Uh, he was talking about two candles and even followed by a close outside the box. I don't particularly like that myself. It, it's up to the individual, but if you do two candles plus a close candle, if those three candles were, you know, in, in quick succession, that'd be 12 ticks. Usually, as a rule, a candle will not be you know, the full 12 ticks on three candles, right? Because they, they hug the previous candle and all. I personally like a little bit of a touch. You know, to give an example on this trade right here, I would fire one contract when that bar closed right there. See, it was heading up, it went to mid-band, never stopped at predictor, and it rolled over right there on that bar. The proper way to do it, though, is to actually wait for that bar right there you know, if you're boxing in. Okay? Okay, we're flat. Now, let me ask everybody a question. What do you do if you're flat and you want to try to get in this trade? Anybody? You got to wait for it to thrust and pull back, right? Into stealth or into a predictor? Let's see if we can get it. We're not in any trade right now. Let's just see what it'll do. Hopefully, I don't kick this up too fast. Remember the rule of thumb? Break support. We want to break support. We want to come back and kiss it or close to it, and then we want a, a rollover. There's our break, okay? That's our little break right there. All right, now let's see if we can get our little, what's stealth? See stealth coming down? Not yet. We didn't get to stealth. That still would be chasing a trade right there. By the way, you can also just literally box even a low like that, but I like a retracement myself. 
See if we can get one. There's stealth right there. So that means we're not going to take out, hopefully, our little swing. See your, like that. See if we can get stealth. I'll take this if it gets stealth. There's stealth right there. That's also resistance, by the way, right there. See that little thrust retrace thrust? That's also your lightning swing on this side. There you go. You just got you a trade. Now, I would put my stop probably just above this swing right here simply because we don't know if this is the end of the trade. Okay? What if you miss that trade? Anyone? What's our rule of thumb, Viper Traders, if we break micro? What does it do? It'll go up and check medium, right? What's our next trade that we're looking for, Viper Traders? We've had one mid-band trade, but we ratcheted down. So we'd be looking for what? A mid-band trade? Mid-band predictor? Absolutely. Let's see if we can get one. I think if you were with us this morning, you'll find out that we actually got this next trade. I, I don't remember exactly what time it was, but we'll watch it in real time and see if we can get it. Always draw on your charts. I've got resistance right here at 1231.80. I'm going to get my targets out of the way. You could even get one another one out of the way if you want. Okay, because this is still heading down. Everybody see that? Now, what you can also do, just like we did earlier, if this does happen to make what we call a, a lightning power meter green like that, see how that's kind of breaking that just a little bit right there? Let's see if we can get a power meter too, and I'll actually reverse the trade. May not be for a bit, but we'll see if we can get it. We don't know where, how far it went down. We'll, we'll find out. It's still lightning down so far. By the way, you could also even add to this little trade if you wanted to by simply turning the short back on on parameter one. That already it would have fired it already. We missed it. Let's just go with the long if it happens to go parameter two green. Everybody sees why I would do that, right? Because if we break micro, now we haven't yet. We did go to break even. If we break micro, we're going to more than likely go up and check medium swing, which is usually mid-band. So would that be a decent trade? Counter trend, but would it be a decent trade? And the answer to that is yes. And you can take that kind of trade with Object Trader because this is stair-stepping down right now, right? Let's draw it. That's your swing right there that would have to be taken out to change the direction of this trade. Let's just get this stop out of the way and see if we can reverse it instead. Power meter 2 goes green. I'll reverse it, but I'm only going to go for two contracts, and we'll go for 5 and 10 ticks. And we just reversed, it looks like, but power meter 1. I meant to do power meter 2. Sorry about that. I may feel some heat on this one because I don't like power meter 1 on this trade. I'm going to kill this. Matter of fact, I'm going to reverse it if this bar closes down. Simply because they didn't take out my power meter 2 is what I wanted. Then we'll reverse it. Everybody see why? You want to be careful with 1 because it's just 4 range bars. Power meter 2 is a little bit more of a trend. See so if we can head down a little bit further. Oh, looky here. Look to the left to trade the right. Remember what we drew in the room this morning? 1229.20. Everybody remember that figure? 1229.10 even. That's, that's the low of the entire night right there. You want to be real careful when they hit those big bottoms like that because they'll usually bounce. Okay? We'll go ahead and turn on... Uh, Power meter 2 to reverse it. 
Let's see if we get it. Notice power meter two is right here, right now. Right there. Still short though, we're good. Now everybody that's been with us a while, where's our next trade on this chart? Anybody draw it on your charts ahead of time? Because we drew this in real time in the room this morning and I can already see this mid band right here. Look at there, we just got a reversal trade. We're gonna just try to go for 10 ticks. See if we can get it. Absolutely, isn't it? It's right up at mid-band. This is what we're looking for right here. Is a trade right there at mid-band. We've got a swing, thrust, retrace, thrust. So that's kind of our little top there. See, then you did an ABC. So we don't want to take out 3150, right? So we need a lower high than that. And I would put my sweet spot right here. So, it looks like we would at least get our targets. We would be looking for a mid-band short on a rollover. Look at there. And now we're going to simply turn on power meter. And if it rolls over, we'll get us another trade. Watch the power meter one. Now that's straight down on those bars right there. I would have fired this already, but we're doing the power meter, so we'll, we'll stay with it the way it's firing. I don't like that so far, but it may give us a better opportunity anyway. If it breaks the swing right here, it'll fire it, but I really wanted it right there. That's a little late to me. We're still okay, though. And I would probably go ahead and fire a power meter, too, if it happens to change that meter and maybe just two more contracts. Look like 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. were in the same place. They do that all the time, don't they, Mindy? Th this trade, does everybody remember this in the room this morning? We didn't do power meter, by the way. We boxed it. Does anybody remember this trade right here? Let me show you how you'd box it. You had a bar up, bar down. If you use the two bar method, you would have gotten in basically on this bar probably closed below the box or this one did. So it's about the same entry I got. That's if you're conservative. Now, if you're a little more aggressive, I drew the box ahead of time right where it was going. All you got to do is fire a contract or two. Okay. So where's your next trade on this chart? Anyone? anyone at all. We're about seven minutes to being out of time, but I think if you look at your charts after what I've just taught for the last hour, you're going to see the trade already. Let me draw it. Let's get rid of the lines on the chart. We're still in a trade, but what if, what if you walked in the room at 925 and you weren't in a trade? Okay, anybody see a trade? Well, we're retracement traders, right? Viper traders. Well, there's one coming up right there, PM1. See it? It just turned green. If it turns red, we could take a quick trade. It's not as much retracement as I want, but let's see if we can get it anyway. There it is. Power meter one just went red. Okay. Now, does anybody see another trade, though? You want to add to this thing? Just like I showed in the room this morning. Watch this little swing right here. This is a, a lightning three. Right there at 1228.80. Okay. What do we think it's going to do? Anybody? Let's just put it in fast forward mode and see if it does just what I think it'll do. Because they usually do. Now if it doesn't, we may just be getting a double bottom. We're going to find out. But let's, let's see. I'm going to put it in fast mode. We think, see how it's kissing that resistance line, and there it rolled over. Everybody see that? See how you can you can wait for the thrust, you can get the little pullback, and you can get the trade. See how it hit exactly where I drew on my chart. Now, did it wicked a little bit? You're not going to get it exactly. That's never going to happen. 
Okay. Now, what if you missed that trade? Anyone? How about this trade? How about if it takes this out and comes back and kisses a predictor? Want to see if it will? Support. Took it out. See if we can get it. See if a predictor shows up. We'll, we'll just trade this thing if it, if it act. There's a predictor, by the way. Everybody see that? Right there at that predictor. See if it'll roll over. There you go. You got your rollover. Now, I went in on a little aggressive on that simply because it was at a predictor. Okay? But look how it's still paying off for me. Not too shabby. Now, what does everybody think about in the future drawing on your charts. What do you think? Thrust and retrace, that's that's what it's totally, absolutely all about. Now let me show you something on here real quick too. If you're looking at Lightning 3, everybody knows that if, if just the way I teach this, you have a low here, a high here, when is this swing established, Viper Traders? When it takes this swing out, right? So let me ask a quick question. Is this swing established right here? Is this swing established right here yet? Yes or no? It wicked it, didn't it? See there? Notice how this swing is still lower than this swing. See there, your lightning three, thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace didn't count because this particular swing didn't take out the lows here with those pushes. You see what I mean? And usually when they do, do that and they double bottom, they'll take these swings out, but they won't take this one out if we're going to continue heading down. I think I'm out of info on it because I ran out of data. I just went to 3, 3 o'clock-ish in the afternoon, so I'm out of data, so we're, we won't get another trade. But does everybody see this trade? If you were trading in the afternoon and you saw this happening in real time, you've got a predictor setting up on your chart. And I was going like 25 times fast, so I just went ahead and fired entry. But where was the entry on this with power meter? You went up, you went back, you went up. So wouldn't it have fired the trade automatically on that power meter one when that bar closed? So let's let's say that you got that last trade only for the day. You would have 1227.80 all the way down. That's a 10 tick trade right there. And if anybody looks at their chart, I'll bet you they even came down to here after the market. Couldn't prove it because I don't have the data. Anybody else got the data on your charts? Has it come down there yet? It may not have come down there yet, but it will. So what's everybody going to do tomorrow? When you first come into the trading room, always have your, your support and your resistance line drawn on your charts. Because if you draw on your charts, you'll find that you'll make more money. We, we designed our entire system around drawing on charts, boxing in, PM trades. Uh, we're going to have predictor trades very shortly that will actually take this trade automatically. It'll only take you know, predictors in the direction of the trend, or you'll be able to turn it to, to require trend if you want, or off. And we've even got a bar close feature on here that you can actually turn on. And I would highly recommend if you do that one, do it with larger bars, because I want to show you this trade right here, what you could actually do with that. I'm going to turn this on to larger bars, and I'm going to put a line right here. And I'm going to show you what larger bars could do for you if you use this feature. Okay, this was a predictor type trade, right? We know that it's sawtooth down, right? But look what it does on larger bars. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, uh, let's just put it on Logic Ranko for right now. Those are fives with 200% rollover. That's a pretty good bar. Same line. Now what if you turned Bar close up, bar close up, bar close up, bar close up, bar close went down. This would have fired your trade. And what if you started with, say, two contracts and then started adding one 
had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you'd be up to five, six, seven hundred dollars, and you could just simply turn off the uh, bar close. The way you do that is automatic. You want to see that trade? See see what it actually does. We've got about well, we're at eight o'clock, but let's just do it. We're at nine oh nine, nine oh eight. Let's go back to nine oh eight. Hopefully this isn't going to lock me up. It might. I've got several charts going. So what I'm going to do, look, if we're going to do this, I'll need to kill some charts so that we can go backwards on this and show this so that you can see how that bar close feature works. Bear with a second. I'm going to kill every chart that I've got except the main one right here as soon as it loads. It hit 1226 is what it did so far. Okay. Let's see. Let's go ahead and I'm going to kill all these other charts. We'll kill that one. We'll kill that one. We'll keep this one. Okay. And let's go back to 908 approximately. Let's see what it does. You remember, you know what trade you're looking for, right? because you had a huge thrust down, right? And now you're looking for a retracement so that you can get in this trade. So let's see, we've had bars down. Let's just go ahead and let this thing play. And I'll show you how to use the bar close feature. If you put this on bar close to the downside, you gotta get the retracement up to mid band first, okay? Cause we know where resistance is. We got it here. We got it here. We got a mid band right there. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for a trade right in that area, aren't we? So let's see if we can get up there and then I'm gonna show you how to use this bar close feature. Hopefully this, okay, that's like 200 times. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on bar close, auto, auto LESE, and I'm gonna simply add every bar close, I'm going to add two contracts to a maximum of 10 because I've got this object trader set at 10. Now you want to be careful. Don't have this thing set at 50 because it'll, it'll go to all 50. You got to set this thing at what you want it to be. Now we know the trade went down, but I want to show you how to use this particular feature. It's pretty cool. Bar close, auto PM, and we can even do require trend because it won't that way it won't fire along accidentally. Okay, now this is a pretty good sized bar. I'm not recommending using this particular size bar because I would have already fired this trade by now. See that candle right there even? And you could do that. You could go ahead and sell too. You know, because it's definitely taken out that candle, right? And that's a pretty good sized candle. But let's go ahead and add some more if we get a bar down. And I'll show you how it'll max it out. We'll get our targets out of the way. There's six contracts because it closed two in a row. See how that works? That's automatically staying on. It's saying auto bar close is on. And this can max out at 10 contracts. Okay. I'll go ahead and speed it up a little bit. Now notice we're feeling a little bit of heat. That's six contracts. So we could feel a little bit of heat. Uh, let's see, I don't think we can use the buyer sell with the bar close on. You will be able to though, Mindy. See how that's eight now? Now it's going to max out at 10 because I've got my max contract set at 10. And then watch what this thing will actually do. See how fast that adds? Now it could take away just as quick though, believe me, because 10 contracts, six ticks is a lot of money, right? Yeah, exactly. But the beauty of this is that this type of uh, bar close type feature like this can get you some nice coin and you can just simply click close. Or you could get rid of say one, two, three, four sets and only add again if this thing keeps breaking. See there's four again. The four total. See if we get another set. It's 
kind of hitting a little bottom right now. We've got four. Let's speed it up and see what we get. That bar's still wicked. Look at that. Look at that. And then you would get out because that bar actually went up. But let's go ahead and stay with it for just a second. Let's see. Or we're going to get taken out either way. Let's just watch it. See, that's maxed out at 10, so it's not going to go any more than 10. See what I'm getting at on that bar close feature? Now, keep in mind that can do just the opposite, and you could be down pretty quickly too. Okay, so if you hit a figure like that, wouldn't you just hit close and go, wow, that was a monster trade. Could you be ready to take it again? I just did. See there? Not a shabby way to trade, by the way, with these little bit larger bars. And you can tell where resistance is, just the same as drawing on these charts. Okay. Now, will it take out this swing right here? I doubt it because that's a identified swing, right? Well, it did. Let's, let's go again. Let's see. Well, we gave up a bunch. That's what you do with a lot of contracts. Let's see if we can get it one more time. There you go. Fast forward and see what we get. I'd probably, since I'm up pretty nicely, hit close pretty quick, and it looks like we're paused now anyway. So anybody see how that could actually work for you? And But what you would do, and I was trying to teach it rather than trade it, is if you get this monster move down like this, if you get a bar close back up, kill the trade. And then don't go back in the trade until you get at least like five candles up. Okay, this would be the only trade. See, this didn't do it. This didn't do it. This one did. So you would have had this trade, and you would have had this trade. I'll, I'll draw them for you real quick. You would have had that trade, and you would have had that trade. You would not have gotten that one because that's only one, two, three, four. Fifth one was down. One, two, three. Fourth one was down. So if you were going for five, you'd get that trade only. So you get that one and that one. And we're developing another tool for Object Trader that's going to do just that trade right there. You'll just tell it you want to do like five or six candles. Use the larger ones five or six candles and you get that trade and you get that trade. And then, and believe me, on a trade like that, you could make some serious coin. I wouldn't recommend just turning on bar close, you know, for up to 10 contracts. I'd probably max it out at four or five. Okay. Now also on your new object trader, you're going to be able to uh, buy and sell also with your buy and sell buttons. Okay. Uh, if you don't have those Logic Rankos, Brian, I like our Ranko bars really well. Go to our data series here, and this particular bar right here, on a like a four and the an eight, I think is really good too. I know I'm running this a little bit over because people want to know. See, see how it's the same trade though. One, two, three, four. This is a little bit uh, larger type of a bar, you know, on the upside, and you got that rollover, one, two, three, four, and you got that rollover. So, same trade. Yeah, I've even done it with like the six, the three and six. Let's see what it looks like with it, and then we'll wrap. Now, with the three and six, you're going to get a little bit more of your uh, lightning. See how that bar went up, 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 and up. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. You would have drawn, the way this new trader will do, it'll draw right underneath the lows, low side of the bars, and it would take trade on that bar right there. The way it'll draw, it'll draw on the, the right-hand side of the bottom of the candle. Same way over here, it would draw like this. And it'll do it automatically, too, by the way. So it get in on that bar. Everybody see that? So when we add that trade, it's going to be called auto trend line. And you'll just tell it, you know, let's pretend this is auto trend line. You'll just say, I want to get five or six bars. And it'll say auto trend line right here. And then you'll set it for require trend auto or something like that. And it would take that trade automatically and that trade automatically. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and draw on your charts. It's the right thing to do, and it's the right way to make money. 
And you'll notice in that room that's not market replay, we were drawing these trades on the chart as we were trading. We got that trade in gold right there, and I got that trade in gold earlier, and we opened the room after that. Okay, this trade though we got at almost nine o'clock, beautiful trade. Okay, thanks everyone for coming. We'll see you tomorrow morning and we'll do it uh, with the real charts. Good night everyone. I'll have this uploaded for the, wet, the people that are with us, subscribers, uh, within the next 30 minutes to an hour and we'll have it on the webinar site uh, tomorrow morning. Thanks everyone.